to our first ever remote learning art lesson. This is my new puppy, Maisie, who is uh, going to be in some of our videos, I'm sure. So, this is kind of a breakdown of how our lessons are going to work. I am going to be posting a new video Monday through Friday every day. Now, every single student at our school has access to these videos. In each video, we are going to start off by doing a five-minute daily drawing. Then we are going to learn a little bit about art history. And then we are going to do a project together. Now, I have emailed every single one of your teachers outlining your assignments for each week. Each week, everybody is going to turn in their five uh, daily drawings that we're doing every day, which is just a five-minute sketch that I will be walking you through in each video. And depending on what grade you are in, a different number of projects. Now, we will be turning these in through Google Classroom. Later this week, I am going to record a video to show you how to turn these in. Now, at the end of the week, all our assignments are due on Friday by midnight, so you don't have to worry about them quite yet. And like I said, I'm going to upload a video outlining how to upload your projects. So I'm really excited to get started. Of course, I miss you and I'm sad or not in our art class the studio, but I'm really excited to bring our art class into your homes with this YouTube channel. So today we're going to start off by drawing something that we are grateful. I know that this is a difficult time for everybody, and I want us to focus on something positive and that we're grateful for. Now, at the beginning of the video, I showed you guys my puppy, Maisie, and she is something that I am really grateful for. So, to be grateful means that you feel really lucky to have this thing in your life, and that it's bringing you a lot of positivity and overall just making your day better. Things that you could be grateful for are getting to spend more time with your brothers and sisters, getting to spend more time with your family, um, something like a certain toy or TV show is something you can be really grateful for that's just making your life better. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the timer for five minutes, and I'm going to draw something that I'm grateful for, and I want you to do the same thing at home. So get out your sketchbook if you've been drawing the sketchbook, or just a blank sheet of paper, and all you need is a pencil, but if you want to, you can use crayons, markers, oil pastels, paints, whatever you have is totally fine. And together, we're going to draw something that we're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> 
of our virtual art class, we are moving on into art history. Today we are talking about the artist Pablo Picasso. So I am going to tell you a little bit about him and then we're going to create an art piece together that is inspired by some of his work. Today we're going to be looking at this picture book and we're going to be reading a little bit and like I said, learning more about him. Pablo Picasso was one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. He was born in Malaga, Spain in 1881 and died in France in 1973. Picasso's father was an art teacher, just like me, at the local school. He encouraged his son to paint and draw. He wanted Picasso to become a great artist one day. Picasso's painting style changed over the period of his life more than any other great artist. He was always trying new and different things. The painting above was done when he was only 15 years old. Now, that is very impressive. This is the one that was done when he was 15 years old with an incredible amount of detail. This painting was done when Picasso was 57. There's quite a difference between the two paintings on there. So this one kind of appears to have less detail, but this is the style that Picasso ultimately became famous for and kind of the style that we're going to be recreating in our project today. This style of artwork that Pablo Picasso became famous for was known as Cubism. So this is a Cubist painting of one of Picasso's friends. The man in the painting looked like he's been broken up into little cubes. That is where the name Cubism comes from. 
comes from. Look closely. Can you see the man's face? What he was wearing? A bottle, a glass, and maybe his pet cat? Who can find? Feel free to pause the video and take a look to see if you can find Pablo Picasso's friend. Cubism is one of the most important periods in the history of modern art. For hundreds of years, artists tried very hard to paint things so they would look real. Then Picasso came along and started to paint people and things that didn't look that way. So what he was painting didn't look real. It looked kind of cartoonish in a way. Picasso was always shocking people. But when he started painting people who had eyes and noses in the wrong places, well... Even some of his closest friends thought he had gone too far. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of trivia on Picasso to learn a little bit more about him. So I am going to give you a statement. I'm going to give you three different answers to choose from. You're going to choose it, keep it in your head, and then I'm going to give you the answer, and we're going to see if you guess right. Okay, so Picasso had a pet A, bull, B, dachshund, or C, a Madagascar missing college. Okay, do you have your answer? The answer is B. Picasso had a pet dachshund named Flip, and a dachshund is a type of dog. Okay, let's do another one. What was Picasso's favorite spectator sport? Was it A. Monday Night Football? B. Bullfighting or C, ping pong? The answer is B. Today, many people feel bullfighting is a cruel and unnecessary sport, but some people in Spain feel it is an important part of their history and culture. Picasso made many paintings, prints, and drawings of bullfights throughout his life. All right, and Last one is, which one is a famous Picasso saying? A, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. B, okay, where did somebody hide the letter? Or C, one if by land, two if by sea. Let's see. A. Picasso believed all children can create pure, simple, and beautiful art because they are free from all the busy responsibilities that can clutter a grown-up's mind. And like I tell you every day in class, every single one of you is an artist. And with that being said, it is time for you to create some wonderful art with me. So what you are going to need to create this art piece is a piece of paper and a pencil probably to sketch it out first unless you're comfortable just going in with a marker that's okay because like i always say there are no mistakes in art we just make it work so you're going to want either a pencil or a marker and then we are going to go in and add color like i said at the beginning when we were doing our daily drawing it's up to you what you use for your color so crayons markers oil pastel paint Whatever is fine with me. We are going to be making a Pablo Picasso inspired self portrait. And without further ado, go ahead and get your art supplies ready and we're going to do this together. All right, so the first thing you are going to do is you're going to decide whether you want your paper to be wide ways or tall ways. Either way is correct and it is up to you. Next, you're going to get either your pencil or marker or whatever you decide you want to sketch out with the imagery. Don't mind my puppy. She's just in the back eating some breakfast. And we are going to divide our art piece into different sections. Now, we are going to use fluid curvy lines to divide our paper into different sections. So I am going to show you guys how to do that right now.
Now, I want to remind you guys that if I am going too quickly for you or you need some more time to do something, feel free to pause the video, finish whatever you're working on, and then we'll move on to the next step together. So, break your paper up into these little different sections. So, we are going to be dealing with each section at a time. So, what we are going to do to start off with is we are going to draw an eye, a nose, and a mouth. Now, we discussed while we were reading our picture book that Pablo Picasso often placed facial features in the wrong spot. So, we're going to take some inspiration from that, and we are going to apply that to our uh, abstract self So, I'm going to be making sure that I'm placing the eyes, nose, and mouth in a place where it wouldn't look like they were making a face. So that means that I'm probably going to put my eye at the bottom of the page because an eye is usually at the top of the page. So I want you to pick a section and we are going to draw an eye together. So for starters, I am just drawing an almond shape. Drawing a little circle for the tear duct. I will be drawing a circle and then a, another circle for our people with, I'm kind of shading it in, adding a little white spot that gives you kind of a shine in the eye, that highlight. And then I'm going to add some color the eye, which I am just doing very loose, close together, zigzag lines. And optional, if you want to add or not, are some eyelashes. I always love a good eyelash. I think it makes an eye look really neat. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little C shape, and they're going to turn into the center. So the C shape is going to be towards the center. And then in the middle, they're just going to be a straight line. So we're going to have our C shapes facing towards the center. And then our C shapes facing towards the center. And with our top eyelashes, same thing, just a little bit longer. And of course, this is your own masterpiece. This is your own piece of work. So if you have a different style eye that you want to do, maybe an anime style eye or another character eye, you do not have to do it the way that I did. I am just helping you if you don't know where to begin. So here is our eye. And now we're going to move on to the nose. So I'm going to put the nose up in this top triangle and I'm going to keep it simple. Again, if you want to do a nose in your own style, go for it, but this is how I'm going to draw my nose. Super simple. This is the bridge of the nose, the little tip of the nose, and the side of the nose with the nostrils. So just some lines to imply a little nose. And last but not least, like I said, we are going to add a mouth. So I'm adding the top lip, bottom lip, a little area where there can be some teeth. And Oh, it's like a smiling face right there. And there is our mouth. So what you are going to do with the other sections is you are either going to draw a picture or write a word about something that represents you. So, for example, if you really like music, you could draw a music note in one of these sections. 
if you really like art, you can simply write the word art. in one of these sections. If you really like, hmm, what are some things that we like? If you really like hot Cheetos, you can add a bag of hot Cheetos. I'm just gonna draw a little flame. If you really like sports, you could draw a soccer ball. If you really like going outside, you can draw a tree. Um, and last, I'm going to draw a wave. So I really love the beach. So. There are no wrong answers here. Anything that you draw in your section is totally fine. Now, here is the fun part where you can get creative. You are gonna take your colors, whether you're using crayons, markers, oil pastels, paints, like I said, anything is fine. And you are going to color this in. Now, I want you to remember that Picasso's style didn't always make sense. Like we were saying earlier, he put eyeballs and noses and mouths in the wrong place. So you don't have to color your drawing exactly the correct way that like a tree would be colored. You don't have to do a brown trunk and green leaves. You can have pink leaves and a purple trunk. You can do whatever you want to get creative. So um, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to work on coloring mine and I want you to work on yours and I'll show you my finished product when I am done. Picasso-inspired self-portrait. As you can see, I included a lot of different colors. Here, you can see I separated my cool colors and warm colors, cool colors being purple, green, and blue, and the warm colors being yellow, red, and orange. I have a lot of repetition in my art because you can see that I repeat lines over and over to create a pattern. I have different types of lines. I have curved lines zigzag lines, swirly lines, and I just added them all together to create this very colorful and unique self-portrait. I'm sure that all of your self-portraits are equally unique and colorful, and I am so excited to see them in their final form. The cool thing is, is that we don't just have art once a week. I get to do art with you guys every single day. So I will be back on this YouTube channel tomorrow when I post a brand new video. And I'll see you then. Oh.